everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. We get great news, great interviews, great interviewees, and sometimes a comedic touch. Today, I have got Bethany Heavenstone from the Graham Bonnet Band, just about to start a tour in a few days. How are you doing, Bethany? I'm great. How are you? As I usually say, I'm a million bucks shy being a millionaire, but I'm okay. <laughs> okay. Wait, let me think about that. Okay, I'm good. Yeah, it's an old John Candy joke from, uh, I think it was um, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Anyways, anywho, um, thanks for taking the time. I know you're starting a tour in a few days. Uh, the Graham Bonnet Band is going to be opening up for MF, FM Official and the Dead Daisies. Um, and you're going to be, um, your, a lot of your, your um, set list is going to be the, the, the most recent album that's released. Um, when does it start and how many shows are in, the, um, in this tour? Okay, well, we're doing uh, eight shows with the Dead Daisies, six with FM, oh. and we've got um, a festival on, at the front of the tour that is with neither, and then we have five Spanish shows at the end of the tour. Oh, wow. Whereabouts in Spain? Or not, well, it could be Spain, but it could be Mexico, or where, where are those shows? Uh, Vitoria, Gijon, Barcelona, Madrid, and Segovia. So are you were actually Spanish. being literal when you said Spanish, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah, we're in Spain. We're going to be in Spain. <laughs> okay. So one of the other reasons I wanted to get you on was because I thought it should have happened when it happened with the males. You know, I, I sometimes flutter myself. Anyways, there's more females, in my opinion, coming to the forefront in the hard rock industry. Not necessarily singers, as we spoke about. Not necessarily guitar players, but especially bassists. Right now, you've got Tanya. Oh. Callahan or O'Hallahan? I forget how to pronounce it. O'Callahan. 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 Yes. Perfect. And um, Becky Baldwin just uh, joined the Merciful Fate uh, tour, and there's many, many more. Um, and I know you've been in the industry for many, many years um, with um, Hardly Dangerous and a few other bands, and now you're Grand Bonnet for the last so many years. What got you started playing bass, and why? And who are your influences, uh, past Ooh. and present? Okay, well, I've always loved music and I didn't realize it when I was younger, but I hear the bass, that's what I hear. That's what I feel, that's what I intuit when I listen to music. I, I don't know lyrics, I don't know the name of the song necessarily. I know the bass line. Mm -hmm. um, I started playing in my twenties. I, I had a boyfriend who's actually, he's the current bass player with Faster Pussycat, Danny Nordahl, and he's the funniest man I've ever met in my life. Actually really? one of the top three. Oh, he's hilarious. He wasn't then. He was, because uh, he's younger than I am. He was a kid that I met uh, at Dan Soteria, and he was living with his mom in, in D.C., and we were very young, and um, anyway, he, he, we, we were together for a couple of years, and then it was time to part company, and I'd been supporting him, as lots of women do, and um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, he felt a little guilty, I suppose. And he left a guitar behind for me or a bass guitar behind for me. And oh. it's, I, I hesitate to even say this because people are going to lose their minds. It was a 66 non-reverse Thunderbird, a Gibson. Oh, wow. Headstock in, intact, Polaris white, beautiful guitar. I mean, it was amazing. Um, I still have it. I'm going to put a kid through college with it. It's just beautiful. Say, yeah. I don't play it. It's very neck heavy. It's bigger than I am I'm a very petite person and as much as I do love Gibson's I am strictly a fender girl I'm a precision okay. girl uh anyway he left this behind and I started messing around with it I'm like yeah okay I can do this it's a right-handed guitar and I'm left-handed so it's that's oh. not yeah it's not that unusual I, I think I'm actually ambidextrous because it's never been a problem mm -hmm. um that's kind of how it started I just wanted i I was always on the fringe of music. I'm I'm about to begin writing a memoir about my life and how music has just saved me in every way you could possibly imagine. I don't want to give too much of it away, but because mm -hmm. I'm certainly not a victim, but I'm definitely a survivor. Yeah. And if I hadn't had music, I don't know if I would be where I am now. And music has given me so much pleasure and courage and just a sense of heart but it's also given me a big set of balls you know because <laughs> if i can do this i can do anything yeah really. i mean i i'm playing with graham bonnet how the f did that happen you know he's, well, he's i mean a, i'm you, his biggest fan he's an amazing musician <laughs> was it i just saw something recently on uh, social media somebody was i'm not sure if it was his girlfriend or if you just have to be traveling with him where uh, he was listening to uh since you be gone 
in his car. Yeah. Was that you? Yeah. Yeah, that's me. Graham and I, yeah, we're we're <laughs> partnered in every way you could possibly imagine. That's yeah, we awesome. we we started working together and about a year into that we became a couple. And you know, it's we've had lots of twists and turns, but he is my very best friend and he's he's a really good guy. I want to kill him on a regular basis, but he's he's a good man. He's a heart of gold. But Give me the that, world if it was his. That's awesome. Um where was I going with this next question? Yes, yeah, since you've been on in the car. It was before that. Okay. <laughs> I'm always like, trying to get myself two steps ahead. Oh, and and the and the bass players that uh, played before you just shows your talent. Like there's Gary Shea, um, Chuck Wright, um, I think Chuck Wright, um, and a few others that are just huge as legends. And you're in their shoes. Just goes to show your talent like how did you get trained did you basically do it by ear when you picked up that guitar that I, I still play by ear I play entirely by ear I had some lessons initially from a, a man named Paul Ill and he is a great bass player and he's like a brother to me to this day uh he was um music director for um let's see Christina Aguilera um wow what's her name he's worked with Courtney Love um What's the one? Oh, I can't think of her name from Four Non Blondes. I, I'm having oh, a brain fart. You know what I mean? I forgot that. Yeah, there's. Uh, oh my God, no. I, I'm embarrassed. I, 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 but you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, I'll, I'll put. He's her, really her super, up. super talented. Anyway, so he's worked with a lot of great people. Um, he's played on a lot of great records. He's, you know, uh, he's um, the unknown great bass player but if you have never heard of him you should definitely check him out anyway so I had some lessons with him initially and then I've just been flying on my own ever since and as far as playing in the footsteps of all the players Graham's played with mm. you, you named, well Chuck's a great player don't yeah. get me wrong I've never played the material he's played but Gary Shea I'm sorry that's cake Alcatraz that's, that's, that's cake yeah that's, those songs were written to just support the rest of the band. I mean, I could practically pedal an open E and play an Alcatraz song on bass. That's That was nothing. But I'll tell you what, what was really tough. Um, Chris Glenn from the Michael Shanker group, oh, he yeah. has this physical anomaly. Okay, so when you hold up your hand, we have one, two, three. With Chris, it's one, two, three, four. I mean, it's like E.T. His hands are huge. He has... <laughs> four pieces to his fingers like I've met other people with it it's a rare condition and I don't know what it's called but I have a picture of him going like this and his hands are bigger than his head so wow. he's able to play so fluidly because his fingers are and he's just a delicious player I love oh my god I love the way he plays he's a gorgeous player and writer he's he's amazing so I just have to make up for it with speed with him and I dumb him down too I'm I dumb them down. I do because I don't need to show off. I need to be a good player that supports the song and the rest of the people in my band. Yeah. So you're not going to necessarily know if I've dropped a note and replaced it with something else, as long as it works and it yeah, sounds, it's, that's it's what got to maintain yeah. the rhythm and it's got to be yeah. there. Yeah. 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 And I, and I do that. I'm, I'm competent. I also love Roger Glover. Oh my God. What an yeah. understated player, mm. but he's, he's all over the place. It, if you listen to that song, No Time to Lose, which is the one song I don't like on the Down to Earth album that Rainbow did, mm -hmm. he's he couldn't have played that twice. Like he was just winging it and it's gorgeous. I'm not doing it. I'm not, I'm not doing it. I refuse to do it. Um, he's, he, oh God, I got to meet him. We went backstage to a Deep Purple show and I met him and I was just gushing all over. I was just like, I, I couldn't help it. I was like, oh, <laughs> not worthy. Yeah. And um Let's see who else is he. The the um, Impelitary songs were kind of interesting. Oh, maybe that was that Chuck. No, who played that? That was Dave Spitz, I think. I don't know. Graham's been in so many bands, like mm -hmm. I, I can't keep up with it. But um, I love Chris Impelitary. Yeah, those songs. Some of those songs were really enjoyable to play. Not I'm not a super shreddy person. Like mm -hmm. I don't necessarily appreciate how many notes you can stick into a short space of music. <laughs> like um, a new day of Malmsteen. Well, well, Okay, no, I'm not going to bag on Ingve. No, I'm no. going to say because Ingve, even though he is doing that, he's doing it with feel. He's actually saying something when yeah. he plays. It, mm -hmm. It's not for the. He's not doing it to shove as many notes in there. He's really saying something when he plays, and I sure. feel his playing. Yeah. But even you know, I'm not going to drop any names. But even some of the guitar players we've had, because ding dang, we had a quite a few in the last few years. 
some of them were just shoving, you know, they're Yngwie imitators and they don't have the same feel. It's just shoving the notes in. I don't feel them as much. And how do you know they're legit with all the technology like digital delay can, you know, 120 notes in 45 seconds, they can double it, right? So I don't, uh, I don't know about if we're, are we referring to live or recording? Because recording, recording, you can do anything. Yeah, <laughs> you know? recording. Uh, yeah, then anything's possible. And I don't bag on other musicians if I can help it, you know? Yes. I, I try not to do that because it takes it takes guts to get up in there and lay yourself bare like that anyway. So I'm not going to I just have preferred players and some that will I'll turn the station when I hear it, you know. Yeah, exactly. And, and the good thing you brought up with the finger thing, um, a lot of great guitar players <clears throat> and, you, and you, you understand it like I play guitar, but not good. But, you know, like with the longer fingers, like it makes it a little bit easier. Like, I mean, you got speaking of I as I spoke with you earlier, I just interviewed Eric. And the Mr. Big thing is going to go on. And Paul Gilbert. And if you ever watch Paul Gilbert play, his fingers are so long. It's Steve, wow. Steve Vai is the same thing. But you still have to have the talent. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Canadian influences. Do you have anybody? And um, everybody says Getty Lee. So is there any other one? <laughs> as far as bass players go? Damn. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, you got me on the spot here. I can't think of any Canadian bass players. Name a few and I'll tell you if they've well, been in. Andy Curran, Coney Hatch. They're going out on tour with uh, British Lions. Steve Harris is uh, from Iron Maiden's band. Andy Curran's a good one, but uh, yeah. I like James Jamerson. I mean, if you ask me, because I didn't answer the influence part, but I like, you know, Jack Bruce and John Paul Jones and Paul yeah. McCartney. And Jimi Hendrix was a great bass player because he, he did uh, most of the recordings. Like, right. I like that sort of bluesy hang back lopey sexy kind of feel you right. know I, yeah. and the genre we're working in is you know a, a little bit different from that and i struggled with that we played with on our first record we used this guy mark zonder who you know he's very accomplished he's got a pedigree and all that but he's so on top of the beat geez i had a stomach ache i had to count through every song he made me a better player for that mm -hmm. but it was really he's really just right on top of it you know he sucks the sexy out of the song but he, you know, obviously he's been very accomplished. So not bagging on him, just saying not my favorite style of drummer. Right, right. Um, so with the shows coming up, um, with the Daisies, um, how many uh, songs are going to be in the set list? Have you guys nailed it down yet? <clears throat> the Daisy set is quite short. So we're going to cram as many as we can into yeah. a 35 minute set. Okay. Um, we're doing a lot of the down to earth record because it was requested. Yeah. And I don't mind that because I really like those songs. Mm -hmm. um, we've got some other surprises. There's going to be some Shanker, some of Graham's solo projects because we're in the UK, which is, you know, he's he's a hometown guy. Yeah, yeah, for um, sure. And we do have something off the new album. Okay. So I'm honestly, I'm trying to remember the set list. Holy shnikes. Well, we'll so see. We're just see what I happens. say shnikes too. This is awesome. I do I do the uh I do the Chris <laughs> Farley all the time. Holy shnikes, I do that all the time. <laughs> well, you're a movie guy. I already picked up on that on the few minutes we've been talking. I you're you're the movie guy. And actually you like the same type of movies. I'm a documentary guy. I watch some movies, but I'll watch them to death. <laughs> I mean, okay. like literally, I've got about 20 movies I've watched in my life. I well, more than that, but I go to my cliche ones and then I steal all their jokes. Okay, that's so. good. Yeah. that's a, that's always a good thing because then people recognize it and they feel a kinship to you yeah yeah and it's flattery right so whenever they say you stole that i'm like no i'm flattering the original person that said that yeah. i'm paying homage to them that's what i'm doing <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm sorry. um i won't keep you much longer i, I thank you for your time I'm, I'm getting distracted by this i'm sorry beautiful lady looking at me in the corner that was with you and athena oh oh god that was so funny so have you uh, funny. In, in contact with uh, athena at all uh, yeah, we we touch base every now and again. You know, we're walking in different paths right now, but I've known her forever. And I'm actually staying in London. Um, Athena and I were in Hardly Dangerous together, and I'm actually staying at our singer's house wow. at the moment. Isn't yeah, she, something? I want to just plug her really quickly because she's an amazing musician, great songwriter, brilliant singer, but she's also the widow of James Brown. And no, I, no. after I write my memoir, I'm going to write her story because it's incredible. Wow. Are you, are you in a old English style kind of a house, not North American? 
Uh, it's definitely a British style house. I wouldn't say it's, it doesn't seem that old. Oh, it just has bad light. I'm no, just kidding. It just has bad lighting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you light up any room anyway. So that's, oh, oh, that's a good one. I know. I know. And I, that's not, that's, actually, Tom Devil. That, that's original too. That's patent pending. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll let you go before I do. I have one question to ask you. What is the opposite of unsubscribe? To unsubscribe is to not follow. So, or to, I don't know, not subscribe to. Okay, you're thinking deep here. <laughs> and usually when I interview the, usually guys, right? Oh, they, you just want me to say subscribe. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, let's try it again. Okay. What is the opposite, Bethany, of unsubscribe? Subscribe! All right, do as Bethany Heavenstone says, subscribe to the channel, check her out, I'll leave the links in the description box. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in North America uh, when you guys do another tour here. And if you're in the UK watching this and uh, Spain, check out the shows coming up with the Dead Daisies and uh, FM Official. And I'd like to thank you once again for your time. Thank you. It was lovely chatting with you. You too.